Right, that's it, that's it there. All right, welcome everybody to another episode of Dog Talk and Coffee with me, Richard Hines. Today's episode is going to be crazy. <laughs> this episode is meant to be a serious eye-opener to the public professional dog trainers, behaviorists especially, <laughs> veterinarians, anybody that is involved in the dog world, okay? So we have such a huge problem right now in the dog world, especially when it comes to training dogs. Millions and millions of dogs are going to sleep now unnecessarily worldwide. I'm getting reports from other countries that their statistics are way up of now dogs being put to sleep on a yearly basis because of outlawing equipment in their countries. We have really completely taken a wrong turn in the dog behavior world. It is so insane that these videos are absolutely necessary for the dog's sake. I'm doing these videos for the dogs. My love of dogs, my passion of dogs, I've made my whole career for almost 30 years revolving around dogs because of my love and passion for them. That is why I'm bringing these things to the table now and gonna really start talking about things that I never would have spoken about before because the world doesn't listen and didn't want to hear the things I had to say, but it's time because the dog world is falling apart and millions of dogs are going to sleep unnecessarily because of the lack of knowledge and information that professional dog trainers, behaviors, and veterinarians have. They know very, very little about dogs and dog behavior. So, I'm going to start here. So hang in with me a little bit. During these videos, it's not easy if I'm gonna explain things properly to do it in such a short form. But I'm, gonna, I'm trying to do my best to keep things at a minimal to get you the point, the idea, and to open up everybody's eyes on these things, okay? So hang in with me because throughout the video, there'll be a lot of things. <laughs> so. I'm going to start here with the case that I'm working on right now. Two pit bulls that are absolutely at war with each other, living in the same house. Right, that's it, that's it. That. So a few weeks ago, we, um, about a month and a half ago, he completely spontaneously started attacking our other dog Rocco that we've had for about two years and um, we didn't know what to do so the first time uh, we just reintroduced them kept doing everything was fine for a few days then they got another attack and um, the attack was so bad that we could barely get them separated and by the time we did I ended up just rolling over and throwing up from complete exhaustion it was probably almost five or ten minutes to get them separated um, both of them needed stitches, they were completely torn up, and we were just heartbroken. I'd never seen anything like that in my life, and my wife's still experiencing post-traumatic just from that. 
and um, then we ended up getting him neutered because that's what everybody recommend was to get him neutered so we got him neutered and uh, the day he came back from getting neutered they got in a fight so bad I was not there my wife tried to split him up and she got five stitches and um, she should have got 20 stitches but they say not to stitch up the dog wound so after that we are complete at a loss we had multiple trainers came come to our house and look at Samson every single one of them within five minutes said we have to euthanize him he's aggressive to humans he's aggressive to other dogs we have to kill him and um, that just broke our hearts. We, we see our animals as kids, and it just really destroyed us thinking that we'd have to euthanize an eight-month-old completely healthy puppy. And um, completely in desperation, completely in desperation, we tried to just find another solution. And um, we ended up finding Richard online and watched some of the videos. And my wife and I looked at each other, and we just said, we have to try it. We have to try it. We, we can't possibly euthanize him, even though everybody told us it was going to be a complete waste of time. And um, within the first session, Samson, which could not even walk on a leash, could not even be near people, couldn't be near anything, Samson was walking on a leash next to another German Shepherd that walked by us. We had no issues whatsoever. And um, for the first time, we saw a little bit of light. My wife was still extremely paranoid. We have a one-year-old daughter at home. And then um, the second class is when we introduced them together with muzzles. Uh, Samson immediately jumped out of the car, hostile, ready to kill him, completely all proud up and his tail straight up and tried to attack Rocco. Uh, we instantly corrected him and um, ever since then it's, it's really been a dream. For the past week we've been introducing them slowly to the point where they slept together last night and um, on their backs completely in submission just as happy as can be. And um, we finally have our family back. And our one-year-old daughter, she can play with them both, no issues at all. And um, we're still in the process, but he's just a different dog. I mean, they couldn't even see each other through a cage, and now they're sitting next to each other with no issues whatsoever. And so it's just been a dream, and I can't thank you enough, Richard. And it's just been, it's just been awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. They have been the best right i have them together now in the house they're fully together no muzzles no leashes no nothing they love each other again they're licking each other in the mouth constantly all day right you see he licks them all constantly yeah. he always goes over and licks them in the mouth right and we just let him kind of right so right there he's gonna licky lick and then just you know right good perfect very good okay we'll let him we'll keep coming yep Ear cleaning. <laughs> right, and a little drive-by lick. <laughs> and if he wants to move over to him a little bit, there we go. You can let him do that, right? And you see a lot of licking. Yes. And so it's just been a dream, and I can't thank you enough, Richard. And it's just been, it's just been awesome, 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 awesome. Playing tug of war with each other again. Everything is back in harmony. Now here. This was Kana. Owner could not walk this dog or bring her out in public at all anymore because she would outburst, go nuts at every dog. This is Kana. Kana goes absolutely crazy when she sees dogs outside in the streets. You see here, she's just going ballistic with this shepherd puppy. And if we were to let her loose, this would be a really ugly scene. Kinda has what I call. And he had tried to let her be with other dogs and she is gonna maul them, right? Went after a friend's dog, really hurt it. So that was the end of that. Now knowing that if she gets loose, she will really put a beat down. It's not fake. It's not just talking on a line and making commotion. So, same thing, third class. Here from doing our system, we take muzzle off. Now that I see she's in balance and harmony.
June tried to lick him. That's awesome. She's licking pumpkin in his mouth. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. We put one of the dogs there, another dog close, that she was trying to kill previously. And you see the licking in the mouth, right? Bringing that harmony and peace back because of physical touch in the right way. It's the most beautiful thing, right? <laughs> Everybody has it wrong. The whole dog world has it wrong. All scientists, behaviorists, positive dog trainers, veterinarians have it wrong. Now, here, German Shepherd. Girl stopped walking this dog because of the crazy every time it sees a dog. And And got near a dog and grabbed onto a dog in the street so we know that the dog will actually do something after two classes third class here I bring dog in and we get the licking again hey sure lover you see the lick, 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 right? This is very common, this affection, after we bring peace and harmony to a dog who's becoming dysfunctional, living in a human world. All right, today's case, we're working with another mixed breeds of Catahoula mix. He has big dog aggression. The owner, when she's taken him out in the past, he's gone after many dogs. Get him! Right, so she's kept them away from dogs the whole time, just in case. And when she goes and walks them, you have to watch out and look everywhere you're going because if he sees the dog, he goes right for it and gets frustrated off his back feet, spit flying. Right, and anytime he's come in contact, he has gone after him and he grabs him. So, what we did here. This is the third class. The first two classes I just worked on structure. Getting him under control and getting mental discipline so we can set this up for today. I was like, what a tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I have a standard system of doing this. There's a mentality. I've been doing this forever. And there's one place to start with this. And pressure is the key to healing dogs. Yes, I said pressure is the absolute key to bringing harmony back and peace back to dogs right this is completely against what the world is being told what everybody believes what behaviors are being taught in schools positive dog trainers in their whole world and schooling that they're getting taught is complete opposite how that's happened who knows because it's absolute insanity so not abuse, not too much pressure. There's a very, very sophisticated game that I have that to do this perfectly and well, it is an art. This is not something any trainer can just pick up, okay? So, 
e-collar is mandatory. It is what brings dogs back to harmony and loving life again, contrary to what everybody tells you and what the world believes. And everybody's first initial instinct, whether it's the public, veterinarian, behaviorist, positive dog trainer, even trainers who don't do positive, they have this all wrong. The e-collar is the only tool when it's used properly. Now let me state this. There's a million trainers who use the e-collar and they're never going to get the results I get because it's not strictly about the e-collar. It's my knowledge that I put into an e-collar, my understanding of dogs that went into the collar to use it exactly in a certain way in touch and exercises that I have created that I figured out about 18 years ago how to resolve things and not just get them to quit attacking each other, right? There's a big difference. To actually come into harmony and be one again and be happy. So, misunderstanding about dogs and their truth at their core and their genetics and their DNA of what they were here for and how to be treated. So dogs become so dysfunctional and nervous and neurotic and aggression, right, more than ever in this day and age because they were really never meant to live with human. So you must be able to treat them a certain way to bring them into harmonious relationship with you Right, 99% of the population is going to treat them the way we as human think they should be treated and that's how we feel that is humane. So, I hope this video wakens people up, opens up people's eyes that to my system there is absolutely no cruelty no dogs, they're not crying, they're not in pain, they're not any of that. You can see here with just these few dogs, and I can show you thousands and thousands of the same thing, of happy, back in balance dogs after we have done my system. One of a kind, only one of its kind in the world, and that is why people continually from all countries and every state in the United States keeps coming to me after everything else has failed and I get them right back in balance so fast the owners cannot believe it. So, hope this did something for you. <laughs> so till next time, Richard Hines, Miami Dog Whisperer. So right there, just gonna licky lick and then just, you know, right.